Hey, uh, this is Scott Haynes here. I'm going to be talking to you right now about um, the install process for getting up and running with the uh, Intro to Machine Learning on Redis um, tutorial and training. Um, so um, everyone's probably gotten to um, the GitHub link so far um, from the bit.ly or from the actual documentation from RedisConf. And all we're going to do right now is take a look quickly through um, the setup process. So if you've cloned the new front spark intro to ML, um, then um, all you have to do is head over to the directory where you've actually um, downloaded and installed the branch. Um, take a look at the Docker uh, directory. And then from there, you're going to have a series of um, uh, directories. We're going to go over those a little bit later. Um, but right now, all we need to take a look at is just the run command. So run.sh has an install. So we do run.sh install. We're going to run through this. Um, I've already installed this, but on the first time through, this might take a while as it's actually downloading the, uh, the actual Redis Docker uh, containers, um, as well as the Zeppelin uh, Docker container as well. So run install. Uh, this is just our data coming in. All right, so now everything's installed. This will probably take you a little bit longer on your first path, uh, first uh, time through, but don't worry about that. Um, just let it run, and once everything's installed, all I have to do to basically start up the whole entire environment and actually start uh, with this training is just do run.sh.start. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to run this. So all this is doing is basically it's first building a Docker network, and the Docker network allows us to have two separate Docker containers um, that are linked together. Um, so we have uh, one that's running Redis. Um, it's called Redis 5. Then we have one that's running Zeppelin. And Zeppelin's a, a notebook environment that um, runs Spark, as well as a bunch of different um, kind of backing languages through things called interpreters. Um, in our case right now, we're taking a look only at the Markdown interpreter, which is helping us to have kind of embedded documentation uh, for this workshop material. And the other part is basically just um, the Spark runtime. Um, so Spark and everything else is already installed at this point. Everything's up and running. Um, and then all you have to do is actually kind of get started with Zeppelin. So at this point, you should see the same thing on your uh, computer as well. So creating Redis 5, done. Redis 5 is up to date, great. Creating Zeppelin, done. So that was just from the start command. So at this point, you're all done. And you should have uh, Zeppelin up and running. So if you take a look at localhost 8080, you should have the Zeppelin environment up and running. So um, right here, just to kind of give you a quick tour, uh, hopefully you can follow the cursor. So from here, we basically have preloaded notebooks. So the notebooks, we have the first part, which is just uh, its intro to Spark. And it's all about kind of the basics and getting used to the Spark environment. If it's your first time um, using Spark, if it's your first time using Scala, uh, if it's, it's kind of your first experience of the notebook environment, um, this is all kind of a crash course um, for the whole entire first part. So like load and query. All it is is basically loading data and then querying that data. Um, we also kind of glance over the cleaning process um, for getting our uh, data ready to explore. Um, the second part of the whole entire training is exploratory data analysis. Um, all this is is us exploring the data, learning how to use the graphing library that's built uh, into Zeppelin that allows us to visualize what the underlying data looks like. Um, third, we're taking a look at the feature engineering and transformation process. Um, so anytime you're, um, you're modeling um, a machine learning model, you'll have data that's made for humans, and then you'll also have data that is made for machines. So we talk about like a, uh, basically preparing our data um, for machine learning um, versus preparing data for kind of human exploration. So the exploratory data analysis, which is our second notebook, is just talking about the process of being able to explore and kind of visualize patterns that we're seeing in the data. A lot of times this will help us to figure out some, you know, some interesting you know, tidbits about uh, what's going on um, in our data set. Afterwards, when we're ready to kind of um, kind of go forward and continue to explore our data through machine learning, um, then we want to basically transform our data using feature engineering techniques. We're going to be taking a look at string indexing, uh, one-hot encoding, um, and then also um, uh, transforming our data to give our machine learning model more, more explicit hints. Um, given that we don't have labels in our data, this is allowing us to create a labeled data set so we can apply supervised uh, machine learning techniques to the, uh, the underlying data. Um, so then if we take a look at section four, it's going to be basically Spark ML 
and we're going to learn how to use logistic uh, regression, uh, linear regression models, and then take a look at how to enhance the performance of the models um, through um, what's called a grid search um, across the parameters for our machine learning models. This will allow us to basically take a range of our hyperparameters for our model and automatically have Spark deduce what is the best performing model. And one of the things we care the most about is uh, predictions that explain our data the best. And so what this is doing is helping us to automatically get the best predictions um, from our machine learning model. And then step five is a showcase of streaming um, predictive models um, using Redis streams. And this part is a two-parter, and we're gonna to get to this in a later video as well. Um, this is really, really fun, and it's worth kind of getting to this point in the whole entire training, uh, because it really shows us how to take a model that is being trained offline and kind of working, you know, working with batch offline to online. And everyone cares about online because it allows you to actually make predictions in real time. Um, so that's gonna be really, really fun. All right, so before getting into any of the notebooks, what I wanna do is kind of take a look at a crash course into what Zeppelin is um, and how to kind of um, configure it. So this is our Zeppelin homepage. Um, if you were uh, running this at your company or if you're running this um, in, an, in a shared environment, um, Zeppelin would um, have, you know, uh, different uh, user kind of user groups, the Active Directory logins. Um, in our case, our user is anonymous because we actually have no login um, set up, which is great because this is not actually something that's online for other people to use. It's just for you in the Docker container. So one of the things that we wanna do um, whenever we're taking a look at Zeppelin for the first time is head over to our interpreter tab. So from our interpreters, we have a list of every last interpreter that Zeppelin is actually capable of running. Um, what we really care about is Spark. So from Spark, we'll have a bunch of different settings that are automatically configured by Zeppelin. Um, so you can take a look at what those settings are. Um, you can look them up online if you want as well. Um, go into like a sparkapache.org um, or you can just kind of follow along uh, with what we're doing here. So Spark Cores Max is important because this is basically our a uh, single point of parallel, uh, parallelization um, for the underlying notebook environment. Um, in the case of a traditional Spark um, application, your uh, cores would actually be um, a unit of parallelization. So if you think about, um, say, running a gigantic batch job, and the batch job has to do a lot of different tasks in order to um, complete um, you know, in a, a specific investigation. So say it's, you know, querying for data and it's doing some kind of filtering and it's doing some kind of aggregation. Um, this will be a series of stages in the Spark nomenclature that all distill down to individual tasks. So your task can be paralyzed over your cores, but your cores are also bound to true CPU cores. Um, so in this case, I've given my Zeppelin environment um, and like the Docker environment uh, four of my cores. And then for the executor memory, I've given it 20 gigs. We don't really need 20 gigs because we're doing everything um, backed by Redis. But in this case, I'll just say I want, I want four by eight because it's a nice configuration. Um, all I have to do is basically click save. And now our settings will apply on the first time that the interpreter is actually bound. Um, this is an interesting thing too because um, Zeppelin will kind of sit there and lazy start um, any of the interpreters um, that are bound to a notebook because otherwise you'd have a lot of overhead for an interpreter that may not actually have to be loaded. So in our case, we're just gonna load Spark. Um, so that's kind of it for now. And we'll take a look um, when we actually um, look at the first notebook to see how this uh, interpreter actually starts up. So for now, we'll head back to the homepage. Um, and in the next video, we'll take a look at loading our first notebook and actually interacting with the content there. So that's that for now. And um, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.